Um, we'll see if you could jump for five minutes in. So um, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Amy McIntyre. I grew up in Hunterdon County, uh, and we moved here from New York City in 2009. Uh, we bought our home so that our the kids that we had someday could go to Redstown Elementary School. When I heard um, about the proposed closure, I was just super upset. I don't know anyone in this area. Um, I don't have any kids in school. My kids are three and 21 months. So I said, I'll just give it a whirl, start a Facebook page and a petition. We have 1,100 signatures on the petition, uh, and we have over 600 people liking our Facebook page, and we're keeping people updated all the time that way. If you haven't come across our Facebook page yet, it's facebook.com slash town. And we're updating all the time with the articles written about us and, um, and information that the board puts out and, and everything, so you can keep informed. We have, I'm sure you've seen yard signs all around the community. We have car magnets. Um, so I'm going to be passing around two buckets here. And there's some car magnets in there. You're welcome to one if you don't have one yet. We have index cards. In, in these buckets, you're welcome to take one, and if you think of a question as Jenny is presenting, feel free to write it down and send your question over to the aisle. I think we'll try and wait till the end um, for the questions, but if something comes to you, I want you to have a chance to remember what, what it is that you want to ask. And, you know, we've heard all the time, how can we help, what can I do? So if you're interested in helping, whether it's getting the signs out to people who are interested, or talking to your friends, your HOA, um, if you want to make a monetary donation, we would certainly welcome that. Saving the school turns out to be a little expensive, so these, these yard signs aren't free. So you can just drop that in the bucket as well if, if you're so inclined. And I think we'll get started. So thank you very much for coming and spending some time with us tonight. This is Jen. <laughs> and thank you, sorry, one other thing. Thank you to my committee of people, because I didn't know any of these people. And now we have a committee of about 15, and we meet regularly, and these were people who were strangers to me. And, and you know, I've learned a lot from them, and we're, we're staying in school together. It's been really fun, and, and I'm grateful for, for all of them. So here's Jen, one of them. Um, so what we wanted to do tonight is walk through some information so everyone kind of has the same uh, knowledge of what's been happening. And, um, and then we want to have, you know, question and answer at the end of that, so everyone has a chance to get their questions answered. Um, go for the next slide. Uh, the purpose of tonight is just to help clarify facts and issues regarding the capital planning process that the school board's going through, and really to encourage participation in the process. I uh, want to really uh, make the point that the information here is summarized. All the information available is on the council website, and we'll tell you where to find it. So if you want the specific details, we really encourage you to go to the council website, see those details. Um, but you know, obviously, we, we're not going to be really active in hours and hours. So just want to make that clear. So why, why is the school board going through a capital planning process? There's aging infrastructure. We have a lot of buildings that were built in the 60s and have not had major renovations and have infrastructure that needs to be updated. Um, also, school grounds and equipment that needs to be updated. There's about 132 million, it's actually higher than that, of needed improvements to our school district. But it's not about 5% of that. Uh, there's also been declining enrollment. So for 10 years uh, in our schools, over the, between 2002 and 2012, we lost about 900 <coughs> students. So the school board wanted to know, well, what's up with that? They did a study. Uh, the Pennsylvania Economy they did a study and said in the next 10 years, you're going to lose another 2,200 students. So that looked really dire. We were going back to a much, much smaller school district. There's also changing infrastructure requirements when buildings were built in the 60s. They didn't have the same ADA, they didn't have any ADA requirements uh, or fire preparedness requirements, and those need to be updated. There's also rising costs. Salaries, benefits, you might have heard about the pension crisis. All those things are costing a lot of money, and the school board wants to be uh, forward thinking and dealing with those. Some considerations, in addition to that, that the school board had when they initiated this process is uh, to remove the trailers. A lot of schools in our district still have trailers that students are in. They want to remove those. There's some interest in full day kindergarten. And there's a need to better utilize our existing space. We have an expensive lease as well 
it's called it the LSAC building, it's $660,000 a year, and if there was a way to get rid of that lease, they were interested in doing that. So, what the school board did is they requested community volunteers, and 40 people came forward. They were organized onto three teams and spent about eight months looking at these uh, issues, coming up with proposals. And the recommendations were presented to the school board on June 18th of this year. And there's a video. The recommendations are really lengthy. I've read them many times, but if you didn't want to, on YouTube, all the school board meetings are, are posted. And you can go to the June 18th meeting and just watch them present the recommendations. It's a pretty easy way to get a sense of the details. So the documents that um, all are listed, if you go to the Council Rock website, there's a link right at the front. This is capital planning. And I just, um, because if you do go to school board meetings, you'll hear a lot of these names of documents, and it's good to kind of have a sense of what they are. All of those three separate capital planning recommendations, um, and they, they all took a little different take, so it's good to know they're separate. They're not supposed to, um, they're, they're just different documents. There's that, what they refer to as the Pell Report, the, the Pennsylvania Economy League made some projections of enrollment, and that's listed on that site. Also, there was a report done by Schrader, who's an architect, who went through each of the schools in our district with a team of people, looked at how we're using our space today, how can we better utilize our space, and came up with a total number of classrooms available in our district, as well as the maximum amount of students that we could actually fit in our district. Um, there's a, a capital improvement document that lists all the needs of the district. There's um, a model for a tax increase. So we're looking at potentially making some really big changes to our middle schools that are going to be maybe $110 million. And one way that um, the administration suggested that we could help pay for that is raising taxes seven consecutive years. And there is a document on the website that details how much and how that will happen. Um, there's also the administration, the superintendent and his team made their own recommendation to the school board. And there's a Q&A on the site from the school board and the administration um, answering some questions that have come to the uh, school board and the administration about this process. So the three recommendations, what did they say? Um, the first recommendation, they all, they all had some commonalities, but there's some really important differences as well. The first recommendation said close Rolling Hills, which is in the southern area of our district, Rolling Hills Elementary, in 2019. Close right time in 2020. And um, where do we go? Our school, Rice Town Elementary, would go um, about split kind of between Newtown and Richboro elementary schools. Um, they did suggest rooming trailers as schools are renovated, which is what we've been doing for the last more than 10 years, I think. And um, they did recommend to build a new Newtown Middle School, renovate Holland Middle School, and close Richboro Middle School. The LSAC, where we have that expensive lease, they said move that to Rolling Hills because they felt that was an ideal size and structure to accommodate the services. Right now at LSAC, the services are network administration, our Sloan School, which is our alternative school, and a chief program um, for adult students. The important thing, I think, in my opinion, about recommendation one is they recommend spending $10 million to expand two other schools, Richburg and Hillcrest, before closing. Town or Roman Hills. So the report says, if you want to close two schools, make two other schools bigger. Recommendation two said, they said, yeah, you're going to probably close Rolling Hills. It's also a small school in the future sometime. But close Town right now. Send pretty much everyone from Town to Newtown except a couple kids, a couple, um, one, one little grouping of kids goes to Richboro. And, <laughs> you, right, but several of the grouping are here and they are very, they care very much about what that's in. They did say immediately remove all trailers from the district. And this is important. The school board is 9-0 to zero on removing trailers. They all want to remove trailers. But they did it by putting up dividers in classrooms. And we have some classrooms, I've been told, or I've seen on the YouTube videos, that are rather large. Um, but um, that's the way that they address that. Put dividers up in classrooms so that you can put two classrooms in a classroom. They said the same thing on the middle schools. Um, they would put the LSAC service at Rice Town, even though it's smaller. 
The problem with recommendation two, and I, I don't want to diminish the work that they did because everyone, they worked eight months. They did a lot, a lot of work, and it's easy, easy to make a mistake. But they lost 69 students. So when they said, we've got this many students, we're going to move them here, here, and here, and then we'll have that many students. 69 disappeared. And so and they, they didn't catch it. It's, it's, it's so easy to make that mistake, but when you add those kids back in, Newtown Elementary would be so overcrowded, more than it was even, more than more students than they had, more classrooms than they used at the peak of enrollment. So it won't work. Recommendation three said close either Rolling Hills or Rice Town at some point, not a specific timeline, not details on where they would be redistricted. They, they address trailers saying we're as many as you can, and they have the exact same recommendation on the middle school. So you can see for the middle schools, it's like unanimous. Um, and they said move um, the LSEP services to Richboro Middle School because they have a loading dock and they thought that would really be ideal for those services. They also had some other things that there were other recommendations they didn't say. They said make our schools K-5, implement full day kindergarten, and build a pool and a stadium as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to save all the money, so that's what you're going to do. So, um, the administration, the, these, the three recommendations were presented in June, and then the summer kind of went by. And in September, the administration came forward and presented their recommendation to the school board. The thing that the administration had that the teams did not have is they had September 2014 enrollment. And their recommendation is do not close any school now. It will overcrowd Newtown Elementary School. Uh, some schools, kids get shifted to good, good no, so that's a risk too. Um, the administration said enrollment at the elementary level is stabilizing, maybe even increasing. We don't know what will happen next year. But for right now, those really dire projection, projections don't appear to be materializing. Um, so much so that we had somebody at the last board meeting stood up to one of the recommendation teams and said he wished the teams had been reconvened once the new enrollment numbers were out. They might have had some different suggestions had they known that enrollment wasn't decreasing. That was a major assumption in the recommendations. Can I just clarify on that point? Yes. As you know, I looked into the Pennsylvania Economic League report and how they did the projections from an economic standpoint because I do economics for a living. Do you want to come up and do This is really, this is, uh, this this is really important here. because the projections were so critical in deciding what we do in the future in our school districts. And um, Stephanie Barry, you just, you just say your name. So just you know, a minute, which is um, I took the time to look at the Pennsylvania Economic League report, which was done by a outside firm that specializes in some kind of um, projections and forecasting with regard to real estate trends, birth rate trends, and other items that impact uh, just overall growth of the population and specifically the growth of school age children. So it was very specific to the district. Um, and what I noticed about the report right away is that nowhere in the report did they account for um, what is, of course, called the Great Recession. So in 2008, you recall, um, the real estate market tanked, the uh, Wall Street tanked, etc. And so as a result, we had a very stagnant real estate market starting in 2009. And I think just the signs that are beginning to pick up, right? And the same thing happened with regard to birth rates. Every economist knows that birth rates are tied to the economy. So birth rates also um, declined in those years 2009, 2010, 2011. But as you all know, the uh, economic outlook um, looks entirely different now with all those, those particular factors, housing and birth rates. And so I think one major flaw and perhaps the reason that enrollment is stabilizing or increasing and that it's not consistent with what the PL PEL projected was the fact that they did not account for the economic cycle. And that's actually a rather basic thing to do in economic forecasting, so I'm not quite sure uh, what happened there. Okay. I would like to add just one thing on that. And, and so our projections for accounts for our school district actually have a history of being wrong and, and forgetting to factor in you know, the economy. So when they predicted the peak, it was off 
by 600 students. So we're off again now. So it's it's consistently wrong. The projections are consistently wrong in our district. So to make all these decisions on a projection, which we're two years in and already quite off, versus reality, uh, it would be troubling. But I, I don't think that's going to happen. No? <laughs> so I'm just finding out that it happened before, and, and for the same reason that the, the economic effects on, on how many kids we have in our school district were ignored, but in the opposite direction. So, um, enrollment was actually up at the beginning of the school year versus the beginning of last school year, and 41% of that was right here at Raystown. Um, the administration agreed with the recommendations, all three that said build a new town, new, new town middle, Renovate Holland, close Richmond. The administration said go forward with that and to continue to remove trailers when possible. So what's what's also important to realize is we have a classroom shortage in our district. Um, the Board of Education, like I said, unanimous on removing trailers. There's a safety issue. They like the kids to be inside the building, and also there's health concerns. Um, they're meant to be temporary classrooms, and um, as they age, they're really not uh, good places for. Um, employees or students today. Since 2006, our enrollment, as it's declined, we've been taking off trailers. And we've taken off 28 elementary school trailers since 2006. We still have 18 being used for students today. Seven have been converted for storage. Based on the capacity study that was done, plus one classroom that got added at Soul Feinstone, there's 204 elementary classrooms in Council Rock. If you take Rice Town offline, you're taking away nine classrooms. Now you only have 195 and a half counts because kindergarten's half day. 195 and a half classrooms. Today, or as of last month, when school started, we're using 214 classrooms. So this is a very simple math problem. It doesn't fit. You can't remove the trailers. And if you can't remove the trailers, yeah. how do you close a school, especially if your priority is trailers? There's also um, something important here is that we do fit kids into buildings when they don't fit. And we do that by using things like storage spaces, not necessarily little closets, I imagine more large closets, but when Schrader <laughs> like they're closets, and they, they don't want to say they're closets, but they're closets. And, and, um, what happens is we do a lot of things like learning support, small group instruction, you pull kids out in small groups and you work with them. And those people, if they have to, can fit in a closet. And so we do that. And when Schrader presented his report, I went back and watched the video, and he said, that's not really ideal. Those spaces are not structured to accommodate being occupied. So they're not ventilated the same way a space would be if you had intended children to be in it. Okay, the baby is not as bad as trailers, but still, like, even if you see a school that doesn't have trailers, like Soul Feinstone, they, they call them atypical spaces, and they use those spaces, so it's something to also be aware of. So, the things that uh, some of us have been hearing when we've been going to the school board meetings um, is that even though it appears you don't have enough space to close a school, and the administration says close a school. And in fact, only one of the recommendations said close one right now, and it lost 69 kids. The school board has asked, and, and not everyone on the school board necessarily wants this, but the school board has asked them, the administration to please model that. So we should be seeing something from the administration soon that shows what our district will look like without Wrightstown. They've also asked the, the administration to model what our school district would look like without trailers. Where would we put the kids if we had to, let's say all the trailers just up and disappear? Where would we put our kids and what would that look like? There's a strong desire on the school board to find savings. And I really support this because if we're gonna spend $110 million on our middle school, it would be nice if we cut costs somewhere. Um, I think, I don't know, I think that's a popular idea. And the school board is definitely, I think, I think a lot of the desire from the people who do want to close an elementary school is a cost savings um, initiative, but it, it, you have to have this before. Um, another important thing, especially if you have kids in the district, is that we're going to need to redistrict. We have some schools with trailers. We also have some schools that have open classrooms that aren't being used. And it's been a long time since we did a full redistricting. So whether a school gets closed or not, I think it's a really good idea to, if you have children in the district to be watching the listserv 
watch the meetings if you can't go watch them on YouTube. You can see the agenda is, uh, for the meetings. And it, they're going to be talking about this soon. And it's going to affect everyone who has a kid in the district. Because even if our school stays open, we don't, you know, might necessarily go to the school. So pay, pay attention to that um, because we're going to be in heaven. You want to find out, like, you get a letter one day in the mail that your kid's going to a different school and you didn't have a chance to have your voice heard. Um, just, yeah. Sorry, can yes. you please just elaborate a little bit on there's this desire for cost savings. Yes. And so some people are looking to a school closure in the interest of saving money. Yes. But what is the estimated savings to so close the last time? Estimated is it amazing? It is not amazing. The, um, the administration on their QA that I talked about before that's on the website. They estimated you would save $620,000 from closing Rice Town. It's all administration costs, so you don't have a principal, gym teacher, all those kinds of things. When you, if you were to read the recommendations, one had really large estimates of savings, and one had really small estimates of savings, and the administration just come back and said 620 is your number. Which is kind of in the middle of the two. Kind of, it's actually in the middle of what the two different uh, recommendation one and two had projected. So that would be the savings. And I would be a little controversial, because Jenny doesn't like I'm not I like to be controversial. I've got no problem being a little controversial. So I just want everyone to know that at this last board meeting, one of our board members, who's been the biggest advocate of closing Rice Town, was kind of disappointed with the projections that administration estimated for the cost savings of a Rice Town closure. And she said, if this is all that we are going to save by closing Rice Town, why did we even go down this road to begin with? Or something to that effect. Why did we even upset these people over such insignificant savings, essentially? And she was saying that she believes that there would be a more substantial savings due to a rights time closure, but I'm pretty confident that there might be an additional 137, one teacher, and that would really be it. So the fact of the matter is the savings are not substantial. Proposal 1 estimated significant costs to get schools ready to receive those children. So if anything, we're looking at savings 10 years from now is when they would be realized. So just wanted to throw that out there. A question over here. What about the sale of the property though? So one, um, there's a, so one of the recommendations said you could sell the property, right? And then you would get the savings from that. There, I have not heard personally a lot of support from the school board for doing that because even if enrollment goes down, what if it goes up? And if you sell the property, you don't have that school anymore. You can't open it back up as a school. And there have been other school districts who have done that and then regretted it because there's not a lot of space. You can go buy later at whatever cost to build a school. Well, we have some space, but there, there's not a lot of I want to just say something. <laughs> On Books County Courier Times today, there was a poll about Warminster School District saying, should they have closed a school or, or should they have left that space, should they have sold it, or should they have left it, you know, they sold it to developers, or should they have left it as open space? And at the time I checked, it was 79% of the community felt that it was a mistake to sell that land to developers. So it's very, it's very current, and, and, it's, and it's not a good thing for the community, especially when enrollment's gonna be increasing most likely in a very few short years. Amy's very confident about her enrollment projections that it's going up. Yes, I am. Okay. I was just going to mention something else. Yes. Uh, Rice Town Elementary was deeded I was to the Council Rock School District for one dollar in the early '60s by the Rice Town Township School District. So basically, this Rice Town gave that school to the school district. So one of my favorite comments at one of the school board meetings was someone because because a school board member had said if Rice Town interested in, in having a school and using that school as a community center of some sort, maybe they could buy it back. And somebody got up and said, maybe you could just give it back. Amy can raise a dollar like in her sleep. <laughs> um, so, so, this, so, okay, so two last points on this slide. The school board is going to vote on November 6th. We don't know exactly what they're going to vote on yet. They're working on that, and they're going through a process. It's actually pretty interesting to watch, but we can, we can pretty much expect that on November 6th, they'll be voting on issues related to school closures, probably Rich Grove Middle School, hopefully not an elementary school, because um, the problems it would create, renovations, construction costs, 
possibly a tax increase because that's been put on the table, and um, redistricting, possibly. Um, the, but the, the point I really wanted to make is that they're listening. We've seen people go up to the podium at the school board meeting, say something, and then school board members say, that made a difference. Thank you for saying that. I didn't know that. Things such as uh, count, uh, Catholic school in the South area merging with another Catholic school and uh, potential for other people to come into the district because they're not happy with that merging. Or um, the CHIEF program where they're going to put that. Some parents have been coming and been very vocal about how that program works and it's, it's made a difference. So you, the school board asks, and they've said, I don't even know how many times, we want to hear from the community. We want to hear what people think. If you can't come to a meeting, you can email them. But it's really nice to have people at the meeting going up and t saying how they feel or hearing what the process is, um, and you can make a difference. Um, so I wanted to just spend a minute on this and throw this out there because you'll hear me saying it a lot if you go to the school board meetings. I presented another proposal, um, an official, I guess. Um, I looked at the enrollment numbers. I heard a lot of things at the school board meetings that made me just like the wheels turning in my head. And I thought, I like the idea of saving money. I like the idea of using our buildings as efficiently as we can. And one way we could do that is if we make seven of our schools be K to four, and we make three of our schools, because we got ten, five to six. Three of our elementary schools. Three of our elementary schools. Take our elementary schools, some are K to four, some are five to six. <coughs> so you would go to Wrightstown through fourth grade, and you go to another school for five and six, and on to the middle school. It would save us, on average, about a million four a year. It would save us, on average, about ten classrooms. So when we look to get rid of trailers, we can do that a lot easier if we don't need as many classrooms. And the reason we we're using so many is because our class sizes are kind of low, the way that we're, uh, both the way that we're structured around the schools and also the way that our grades are structured. So I don't want to get into all the details of how it works, but I'm happy to talk to anybody who wants to. We have a link on our Facebook page with all of the documents we've produced through this process, including um, this thing about fifth and sixth grade centers. Um, there's other school districts that do this. I call the principals of those school districts, mostly because I really want our superintendent to call, and I was kind of afraid that he would call and they would be like, oh yes, this fifth and sixth grade center thing is awful. We're going to totally ditch it next year. And I would like to know that before I they heat it. I would I just drop it if that was the case. But I heard really interesting things that I liked as a parent of elementary school children, and they were excited. They liked their model. They had their model for efficiency reasons, but they've come to love it. And so um, you still need to redistrict if you do this. But if you do it and redistrict, we could be a much more efficient school district, saving money. We could use that for other things or lower, not raise our taxes quite as much. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Can I ask you what the response to your plan is from the school board? So um, at one meeting where I presented it, they did say that they would like to look at it. There hasn't been a lot more talk about it, but I think it's a new thing, and it probably needs to sink in a little bit. Um, I also think you know, people just need to think about it and maybe look at it for themselves and figure out. So they haven't talked a lot about it, but I don't see that necessarily as a bad thing because I'm coming in very late. It's kind of a little bit of a weird idea. And um, I, I, I talked to a parent in a district that does this, and the comment was, we all think it's weird, but it works fine. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's just the kids go over there for fifth and sixth graders. But some parents have said, I think my kid would really like to be in a school with all fifth and sixth graders or not with the babies. But the parents don't want them with the big kids either. So it's a way of saying, our kids are still elementary students, and we want to treat them like elementary school, so we want to get them ready for middle school. And maybe we could do some interesting things if all fifth graders and sixth graders are grouped together. So um, I've heard mostly positive things. Um, I think there's some concerns, but you know, my, my question when people have concerns is, if you don't like it, do you not like it a million four dollars, a million point four, hundred, whatever, 1.4 million dollars a year worth? Like, do you hate it that much? Mm -hmm. Or do you just kind of like not like it or for only for you to look up? That would be the question for me. I know you don't want to get into details, but it's the same amount of kids. And just where is the million four coming from? How are you efficiently using it then? Okay, so we have class size standards, right? Am I done? Wait, that's, that's, that's my the last thing. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, okay. 
Okay, so we have class size standards, and I, I don't have that up here. I think Amy asked me to make a slide, I didn't do it. Hi. So <laughs> we have, you can have 25 kids in a kindergarten, first or second grade. You can have 26 in a third grade, 28 in a fourth grade, and 30 in a fifth or sixth grade. Well, if you can imagine, at Racetown, we have 25 first graders and 25 in each class in second grade. We don't magically have 36 graders. What happens when you take a larger group of kids and you put fifth and sixth grade together, you can put 27, 28, 20, you know, almost 30 kids in every class because you pull from a larger group. So that's why it does. Also, even though Rice Town is pretty small, some of the other schools, a school that maybe before would only have two fourth grade classes, might have four fourth grade classes. When you do that, it's more efficient because it's less likely that you end up with really small classes. Okay, so where is the savings? Coming? Okay, so sorry. Teachers. teachers. So $30. So you need 10 class. less teachers. If you need so 10 less there, teachers. Is there going to be rebuttal from the teachers union on this? So in 2006, we had we were using 240 classrooms. I mean, 2006 wasn't even that long ago. Right. Every year, enrollment has declined. We have less teachers every year. I'm not the administration. I don't know exactly how it works. But I'm thinking that every year we have the number of teachers we need, and we either let go teachers or we hire teachers based on what our needs are. If we suddenly need 10 less <laughs> teachers, we'll just have 10 less teachers. I'm not sure that the, it, it, I could be wrong, because I'm not like a union person, I don't know anything about it, I didn't even know any of this before I started. Well, um, you're so going to lose teachers if you close right now. Well, so, well, one well, teacher, one, 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 you might lose one teacher if you yeah. close right town. Um, you, you could lose two in some years, on average you use 1.4 a year. The issue is that the teachers don't have a right to have us be inefficient so they can have more jobs. Agreed. And I love teachers, I know teachers, my teachers, I think my kids' teachers are the best teachers in the world. But they're also parents, and I think they under, will understand that if we need less teachers, we're not going to hire teachers to sit around and do nothing. And so we've, we've lost teachers. We've lost, 2006, we're we've lost 214 sections, classrooms right now versus 240 in 2006. So a significant part of the savings are all of the It's savings. all of it, is teachers. Mm -hmm. If you structure so that you so in space, what happens is, is right now our average class size in the district as elementary level is 23.6. If you do this, your average class size is 24.7. It's a little bit higher. It's a little bit closer to what we want. And you're using your teachers more effectively. If you have, we have, we have classes in our district. We have schools in our district that have 18 kids in a classroom. We pay a teacher on average the blended salary and benefit rate is $137 and $200, $137 and $236. No, whatever. $137,000 <laughs> is our average teacher salary and benefit blended rate. So if you have 18 kids in a classroom, you are underutilizing a very expensive resource. If you can have 23, 22, 24 instead of 18, you're better utilizing that expense. And that's great. Can you talk a little bit about the cost of your proposal versus this proposal uses our existing buildings. We don't have to expand any elementary schools. We don't have to create a lot of infrastructure changes. We would need to take the kindergarten desk from one school and fifth grade, seven, sixth grade desk to that school. You move a little bit, you might have to make some toilets bigger that used to be kindergarten toilets. It's not a huge, huge well, investment. Yeah. So you got another strata of class. We want elementary, middle, and high school. You have elementary, pre middle, and middle, and high school now. Yes. So right now, so in my proposal, I make three fifth and sixth grade centers. One in the north area, two in the south area. Newtown Elementary would be the fifth and sixth grade center, not for any other reason than its size and it can accommodate all of the fifth and sixth graders in this area nicely. Right now, there's a bunch of buses that go to Newtown Elementary every day. You would have those buses. Somebody from transportation would need to model this. I can't do that. So when I talk to the other school districts that do this, I ask, how do you do it? And one shares the buses. They're kind of close to a K-4 to school, so they share busing with K-4. So all the buses take all the fifth and sixth graders plus some of the K-4 home. 
Another school district puts them on the bus with the 7th and 8th graders. And they said that's the only thing they don't like about their plan. If they had enough money, they'd have more buses. They wouldn't serve 5th graders on the bus with 8th graders. But they have a zero tolerance policy. They're on top of any issues. It sounds a lot like what happens right now when my 2nd grader has an issue with a 3rd grader or 4th grader. Um, the school jumps on top of it and they, and they watch it. Okay. And if you save 1.4, you might be able to be moderately less efficient in yeah. the route if you don't like that. Right. So <laughs> what my suggestion is, is that if the school board looks at this, that they involve the transportation department, that they model this, they figure out what would they need, would there be additional costs, how would it work? I think because two different school districts do it very differently, there's some options mm -hmm. and they can look at those options and say, well, how would it work? I just gave the idea. We could be so much more efficient, but I can't give out work out all the details. And that's absolutely a concern and I'm hoping that they look at it and then they can tell us and that we would have a chance to, to have dialogue around it once we know what they would suggest. And may I also just say that no other proposal addressed the busing issues with their, so when they proposed to close right. Rice Town and said Kinster Ridge Road, they didn't model the busing implications of that. They say yeah. there are always some implications that nobody knows. So Jenny's not, you know, you she's know. holding herself to the same standard that everybody else did, except that she didn't make well, the, they also, the, the teams that did all their work over eight months, they had eight months. They had access to all the principals. They got to tour the schools. They got to talk to the administration, including the finance people in the administration. I spent a week with my little lab. So it's not on the same, um, it, it doesn't have the same level of detail, but I, I believe it's a workable solution that I hope they, they pay it. I'm sorry, what is your background, Jenny? I'm sorry. Well, just don't worry, I'll pay you. I used to be a CPA, even though I can't say 137 to save my life, but a million thousand, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a CPA. <laughs> you're right now. <laughs> I checked all my numbers, and I know I didn't lose any kids. Um, but I used to be a CPA, and that's... Listen, I, I think the point of tonight isn't really to vet no, yeah. your proposal. Which, hang on. Yeah. I've read from front to back, and I think is mm. terrific, and I appreciate that you did it. And I don't want to denigrate the committee's work, but I don't think they thought outside of the box even a little bit. And I think you thought outside of the box a lot. And for me, that message is... Uh, certainly there should be no vote, not even this year, on closing a school because there's a lot more work to be done and there's a lot more facts to be vetted. And if, and if you listen, I just spent, I'm sorry to admit this, several hours watching the last three board meetings. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, and, and I gotta tell you, there's, there's one or two board members where it, it, it just feels more like a power struggle than a real informed vetting of the facts. And, and for me, the purpose of this meeting is to kind of inform, which you've done a fabulous um, job, and, and, it, and it was not really one-sided, and it was not, you weren't inciting a riot. I really appreciate your approach, really, really appreciate it. But the purpose of this meeting is to let everyone know that uh, we're not making, our, our elected folks may, might not be making an informed decision and might not be really uh, looking at creative ideas. And again, that's not to denigrate the committees, they did a great job. But we've seen, you know, you see this before. They have a, a structure around what they think they're supposed to do and they act within that structure. You didn't have that. Well, and I would say too, like, I think the committees were a little bit handicapped by the, that they had these dire projections and they really believed that, that is what was going to happen. And that, I think, put them in a box a little bit. So for me, the call to action really is to get out to the meetings and let people know that we don't think an informed, we're, we're, that it's totally informed, that we're using the facts that are available to And us. I'm going to finish up so we can get to the Q&A, but I want to add that the only reason I had this idea is because I went to the board meetings and I heard board members saying things that I liked, like we could be more efficient. Like, what happens if we combine schools that are too small to really be efficient into, like, kind of treat them as one school? Would we be more efficient? And it's because of board members and what they were saying, what they want. And I like to give people what they want. So that's what happened. 
Um, what, uh, okay, so we haven't really had a lot of people at the board meetings, maybe like 25 people or so at the board meetings from our community, maybe a little more at some meetings. We'd really like to see that turnout come up. Um, the board meetings are every Thursday, and you can come at the beginning, listen to a little bit. They have public comment right at the start, and then if you need to leave, you can leave. Um, they talk about capital planning at every meeting, so we really encourage people to come out. We're facing potential, possibly, maybe, seven years of tax increases, losing our schools, students in overcrowded schools, and redistricting whether we close the school or not. So there's a lot of stuff happening at the school board to pay attention to. And we just want to encourage people to get involved, attend meetings, use your voice at the meetings, and in uh, email if you can't attend. Um, and these are the upcoming board meetings. Every, the, uh, every Thursday, three more in October. The two that are bolded, there's one this Thursday at South, and there's one on the 23rd at Newtown Middle. Those are exclusively dedicated to this topic. There's no other agenda which can be long and um, uh, go on and on and on. They just, those two meetings, if you could only make one meeting, I would encourage you to make one of those two. I want to say something, Jay, too. Regarding the next meeting coming up on the 9th this Thursday, the, 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 the board has asked the administration to specifically use a model to basically redraw the district, to redistrict, and figure out a way to make all this work. So it not just, so yeah, it's going to be very interesting. So if you know people who are not part of Rice Town, who are new, from Newtown or from Richboro or, or whatever, I would strongly encourage you to let them know as well. Because this, what you're going to see or what we may very well see on the 9th is going to affect the entire district. It's not just Rice Town. It's not just who's going to Rolling Hills. It, this could affect everyone. So. Definitely. And we have a suspicion that because... You know, for a couple reasons. One, because it didn't nobody said close Newton Elementary because we're Team Save West. That people aren't really aware that they're going to be impacted in other schools that weren't mentioned in those reports, and everyone's impacted. So, um, you know, if, if, I totally agree. If you know someone that thinks they're not impacted, that they can just come and listen on on Thursday, uh, it would be really. I, th I think it's going to be interesting. So, uh, and then the last one here is the sixth. They're supposed to vote on something. Then absolutely <laughs> not. I mean, like something because they're going through a process to figure out. They're trying. I think trying really, really hard to come to a good decision, and they're listening. And the more people that come and talk, I think the better. So um, something's going to happen, and we don't know what it's going to be. I don't think the board knows what it's going to be yet because we're not done with this process. But that's also, I think, I mean, probably there. Um, and that's it. So okay. Yes. Sorry, I have a question. Um, if they're supposed to vote on November 6th, when are they going to supply the public with what they're truly going to vote on? Because right now you have four recommendations, and we know that it's going to be something is going to happen, but they got to give us some notice of what it is they're voting on, and there's a, there's a meeting six days beforehand. They're trying. From what I've seen when I've gone to the meetings is they're talking about what are we going to vote on, what are we going to vote on, and they've got kind of a list. I don't think it's been made public yet of what they're thinking of voting on, but they're still talking about it. So they're trying to figure out, well, is there support on the board to try to do full day kindergarten when we have no space in the district anywhere? Um, things like that. And um, so we, I think their hope was we would have already known that, that by the beginning of October, we would have had a month for the public to know, we're going to vote on this and come and tell us what you think. But the way that the process seems to be unfolding is the only way is go to the meeting or watch it on YouTube, see what they're talking about because if you watch the meeting, you get a sense of what they're going to probably be voting on. But it's is there anything in the bylaws that says that there has to be open to the public and it has to be a determination for a set period of time? It's just the meeting. No. So yes and no. Every meeting's open to the public, right? Every meeting we can go to. The only requirement is if they do close a school, they have like, I think it's a six month process, but they have to have a whole thing. So let's say, for example, that I think they're gonna vote to close Richborough Middle School or something, you know, to make changes to enable them to close Richborough Middle School. But they can't close that school so we have this, for, years. For, for the process of six months. So um, I think, no, they can vote on November 6th to do whatever, unless it's close a school, if you know, redistricting or getting rid of trailers or whatever, if they say close rights down, yeah, there's going to be more 
meetings, there's going to be public notice and things. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a public comment period. I don't recall what they talked about at the meeting. was like three months. Three public months comment. cooling off but period, is, yeah. I believe it's called. That they yeah. are not allowed to actually, they can vote, to vote on it in three months. And I can assure you one thing. If, if the board makes anything public about these are the motions we're going to vote on on November 6th, it will be on the Facebook page, and we will, yeah. we will Amy yeah. will be emailing everyone, and she might be coming to your house, um, 